Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Kaylani here on The Blessed Driver. So, okay, so first of all, in this series of videos, I'm going to have several, if not many, <laughs> several videos that I'm going to be doing on how to start your own rideshare, food delivery, grocery delivery, or courier business. And so basically these are different um, services that you can offer in order to make yourself a success and offer services for people that would like to use them okay and as you guys know there are so many companies out there that are offering services such as this okay for instance i'm going to give you guys some examples grocery delivery some of the most popular grocery delivery apps right now um is, is of course instacart i think instacart is probably the leader of grocery delivery at this point and then there is shipped and i'm not quite sure if HelloFresh is still active um, there's Peapod. I mean, there's so many, there's so many grocery delivery companies out there now, but there are grocery delivery companies that they just ship you the groceries. And then there's some where people actually deliver them for you that they actually shop and deliver. Okay. Um, as far as ride share, you guys know the most popular ride share is of course, Uber. And then there's Lyft. Um, there's a few other ones. I think there's C Jane go, which is basically just for females only. And there's some other ones. Okay. Now, there are food delivery companies, of course, you know, there's Grubhub, there's Caviar, there's Uber Eats, there's Postmates, and there's DoorDash. I mean, there's a list, there's like the list goes on and on, okay? There's like so many of them. And, you know, there are companies that there are actually third-party companies that they use these delivery companies, uh, they, they utilize the delivery companies to send out orders. Now, I, one I used the other day, and I'm, and I'm pleasantly surprised that they were good. It was a company called Beyond Menu. Okay. I downloaded the app because me and my son wanted some Chinese food the other night and I just ordered some noodles and stuff. But, and, it, and I'm not quite sure how they had their setup, but basically they were able to, um, you go on the app and you order your food, like through any restaurant that's, that's within your region and they deliver it to you, but the restaurant delivered it. So they didn't use a third party because some of these use third parties like Seamless, I think. I think Seamless and go waiter or something, but the restaurant delivered it. Okay. So, which was nice. Okay. And then there's also other courier, uh, or, um, other courier companies that you can utilize here in Orlando. They have several, uh, courier delivery businesses where they deliver packages. Uh, they deliver boxes, you know, they deliver, um, certain, uh, you know, documents and things like that. So, I mean, you can do whatever you'd like. Okay. So the first thing I want you guys to think about this is number one. Okay. This is number one here in the video series. The first thing I want you to think about, okay, is pray about those of you guys that pray or decide if this is the business for you now. Okay. With that being said, really think about if this is something that, that you want to do, because it's one thing to start a business and it, it, it can actually be very exciting when you begin the process or begin to launch and Think about how long you'd want to do this. Okay, why do you want to do it? Um, what is your motive for doing it? Are you a disgruntled person who wants to start your own grocery or rideshare or uh, app-based gig company because you're still angry with the company that you used to work with? I mean, there's so many reasons why, so I can't get into that because that's your own personal business. But what I'm saying is, why do it? Okay, who are you thinking about? Is it just yourself to make money or are you also thinking about customers? You know, because in the long run, it's going to be the customers that's going to sustain you because they're going to be paying you for the services, right? So think about why you're doing this. Uh, some people only want to do this because it seems to be the latest wave, the latest thing to do at this moment. And so to them, it's just, okay, it's just another gig, so why not do it? It's kind of like how some people go from job to job to job with like no stability and wonder why they can't get further in life is because, they're, you know, they're not they're not consistent. And so with this type of business, you need to make sure you have a pure motive. Like you're not just doing this because, you know, you're just, I mean, I'm not saying this in a negative way, but oh, because I'm, I was mistreated, so I'm going to start my own business. Okay, is this the type of industry that you want to get into? Because some for some, the service industry may not be the best because they have no people skills. Okay. So if you have no people skills, this may not be for you. Okay. So whatever your motive is, um, it is my prayer that it is pure because you want to make sure that you're doing this with the best intention. For one thing, of course, you want to make money. You want to get to the bottom line. And also you want to make sure that people are offered a service that's going to 
not only make them happy, but they can continue to use your services over and over again and also recommend it to other people, okay? And also another thing to think about is the side, if this is a business for you, is the risks that are involved. Um, and the reason why I say that is because there are no guarantees with any business. There are no guarantees with a lot of stuff. But if you run your business properly or at least try your best to, you should be able to be very successful at this type of industry. Um, and, you know, like, like the risk involved, you know, it, it could be dealing with, with your competitors, dealing with uh, customers that are angry, you know, just just customer service. I mean, it could be issues going on, you know, uh, in your state or, or um, country regulations and also the potential of your business not making that much money or not doing as good as you would hoped it would have been. I mean, there's so many things you have to think about, but not to focus on the negative, but just think about some things and prioritize yourself and make sure that you do your due diligence before you start. Okay. Now, another thing to think about is will you hire staff? You know, is this the right business for you? Is it just going to be yourself doing this? And, or would you have somebody with you like a husband or wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, or partner or whatever. And so, Will you have people working for you? Some people decide, you know what? I don't want to have a lot of people working for me. I just want to have it to where just me or my better half or maybe have my kids working with me, you know, if they're of legal age. And so think about some of those things too, okay? Um, if it's right for you, because let me tell you guys, if your business is as, as successful as you want it to be, you might get more clients or more customers than you would have ever expected. And so you want to make sure that you're able to handle the load or, and, and handle the, the increase of customers or clients that come on board to your, um, you know, uh, to your business. Okay. And so that's something to think about. Will you be hiring drivers? Will you be hiring a staff? Will you be hiring someone to take care of payroll? I mean, think about some of those things. Okay. If you hire, if you decide to get people on board, okay, will they be independent contractors or will they actually be employees? And so that's something to think about. Now, I had seen a video on here, um, and I, I actually I saw it last year, and and this is so funny because I was actually going to work on this before I even started the video, and there's a lady on here who actually has a video about how to start your own ride share grocery delivery, but not ride share, but grocery delivery business and courier business and stuff, and she has some great information, but you know, and it's very low low startup, and it's great information, and so but she has people working for her, and I think that's great, but it works for her. And so that's something to think about as well, you guys. Okay, you know, um, how much am I going to be able to put into it? Can I afford to do it? Things of that nature. And so, and also to decide if this is if this is the business for you is look at your competitors, like look at what they're doing. And some of you guys may not be as big as Instacart or Shipped or some of the other major, uh, you know, grocery delivery companies, but or like Thrive. I love Thrive. Like. Five is the best because <laughs> they deliver uh, wholesome and healthy foods. But um, is it going to be short term or long term? That's something to think about if this is for you. Uh, are you doing this just to make money for the next seven or eight months or a year? Or are you going to be doing this continuously from maybe about five to 10 to 20 years or so? However long we're going to be here, you know. And so think about some of those things. Um, are you doing this for the long term? Because some companies, they start out great, but then they end up... Um, you know, maybe shifting off to doing something else with their lives or they sell the business. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm going to give you an example real quickly. For instance, Ebates. Uh, when I first started building websites, I started building websites in 2000 and 2004, around 2004 ish, 2003, between 2003, 2005, so somewhere around there. Can't quite remember. And I, at that time, around 2001, 2000, and, no, it was between two. It was between 99 and 2001. I started really studying affiliate programs and started studying uh, websites and things like that. And so I began to realize that a lot of these companies make great money by using affiliate programs. Ebates was a is a company. I'm sure you guys have heard of Ebates. And basically, you make money back from any purchase that you make from certain websites or certain retailers. And you can get a nice chunk of change back from your purchases, like 3%, 5%, 2%, like, like whatever it is, right? And so the gentleman that started Ebates, and a lot of you guys may not know this, he used, he went through an affiliate marketing channel and he used Linkshare, I think, but he mainly used Commission Junction. 
and those you guys or cj.com and commission junction is an affiliate based website where people can use affiliate based links through many different retailers or companies or services and put them on their website in order for people to utilize to make a commission and he made a lot of money and when he developed ebates he used mostly and, and if you go to the website now that's how they make their money they use affiliate links and some kind of way they implement the code to where people could um save their money um well they could save money by using certain discounts and stuff like that and basically it's a whole it's a whole affiliate type of thing right okay and so this man was very successful and i read his story on the commission junction website and over the years i kept reading his story over and over again and he um he did he made like the company made like millions i don't know if it got to a billion or not but this guy he did great for from affiliates and so, but he knew what he was doing and that was the industry that he wanted to get in. And after a period of time, he decided him and his, I guess his, um, the vice president or whoever his uh, co-founder was, they decided to sell the business. And so they, I can't remember who they sold it to. I think they sold it to Rakuten, which was, which used to be Linkshare. I think that's the company who they sold it to, but he was in the industry for like almost 15 years and so or 12 years or so he, he was in it for a long time and he sold it for a billion dollars so can you imagine how much money he made from that but he knew what he wanted to do and so i tried to make my own affiliate website and, and i did okay but i didn't stick with it and i just and at that time i had basic knowledge of designing websites but not enough to actually be successful at it and i made a, a little piece of change here and there but through affiliate links but it wasn't that 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 successful and so but my thing is some things may work for you because it's meant for you to do it. And things that don't work for you, it's just not meant for you to do it. And so with that being said, think about the long term. And I think that's a beautiful story to me because with that, he knew what he wanted. I'm sure he did his research. He was very successful at it. And it may, be, and it may have been something so small that started out so great. And now the company, even though he sold it, you know, um, he's, he's still got money left over, like tons of money. And so that's something to think about, guys. And I'm sure that there have been other companies that started off seemed like it was a great idea, but then it, it but then it, it had eventually folded. So I want to make sure that you guys are in this for the long haul. And some of you guys may actually be successful at this, but then after a period of time, you want to get out of it and then maybe kind of merge with somebody else or sell it to another company or have somebody buy it out. And that's okay. It's however you do it. That's between you and your attorney. So with that being said, that's number one is you know to, to decide on if this is business for you. Some of you guys may want to pray about it. And say, you know what? I want. I have to think about this. I need to think about if this is what I want to do. And start, you know, just start jotting down notes, start journaling, and then from there, you'll be able to to kind of take a look back at some things and say, you know what? I can do this. And then just kind of go from there. Okay. So with that being said, I'm going to go on to video number two.